The hour of five o'clock having arrived, I'd like to call to order the regular board meeting for the Velocitas Water District for December 6th, 2023. Public notice, best part of the meeting. Jim, <laughs> before we begin, I would like to announce that members of the public may watch the meeting via computer or smart device by going to the district's website and clicking the watch live icon. However, they will not be able to participate in the meeting remotely. Members of the public may also listen to the meeting live on their phone by dialing 888-788-0099 toll free or 877-853-5247 toll free. When prompted, enter the meeting ID and passcode displayed on the district's website. I would like to lead us in the pledge. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good. Roll call, ladies and gentlemen. Please indicate your presence. And we're all here. Thank you very much. Uh, addition to the agenda. Do we have any additions to the agenda? We do not. S seeing any, uh, I entertain a motion to approve the regular agenda. So moved. And a second? Second. Uh, please vote. And it passes unanimously. Do we have any public speakers? No, sir. Very good. Presentations. The first one. Let's go down. Okay. is to our fine outgoing general manager. Glenn, would you join me up here, sir? Yes, sir. And I'll just tell you a little story. Uh oh. <laughs> So we held the interviews for our new manager. Uh, Glenn was not our first choice. Mm -hmm. There was another gentleman who lived in the area, had brought to his district millions of dollars of grant money. And of course, we were all over that until we find out a little bit of trouble. So <laughs> Glenn rose to the top immediately, and it was the smartest damn thing we ever did. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you for being with us. I was one of my wife's first choice either. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, it made me great. Right. Here's a lovely little memento for you while I read this resolution. Resolution of the Board of Directors of the Valacetas Water District expressing appreciation for the service of Glen Proom. Whereas Glen Proom has served the Valacetas Water District for seven years as general manager since November 16th. And whereas Glen Proom has been active and represented the district in numerous organizations, associations, and committees within the water district industry, and whereas Glen Proom has continually demonstrated a remarkable service ethic, dedication, and transparency to the district, its employees, and customers, as well as the water industry and the community. And whereas Glen Proom 
supported personal and professional development of staff and has motivated the workforce within the district with recognition, mentoring, and advancing an effective succession plan. And was Grenfell supported staff efforts to achieve the district's first ever AAA rating with the Finch Rating Organization. Whereas Glenn Froome supported staff's effort to achieve district awards at the federal, state, and local level, and whereas Glenn Froome has enhanced the reputation and standing of the district among the water community by working collaboratively with fellow agencies, institutions, for the benefit of the region, and whereas the Board of Directors desires that public recognition of the services of Glenn Froome on the behalf of the board be given. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Directors of the Dallas Cedars Water District does hereby extend its deep gratitude and appreciation to Glenn Froome for his years of dedicated service and does heartily extend best wishes that his retirement be characterized by peace, prosperity, health, and longevity. Passed and approved by the Board of the Cedars Water District, December 6, 2023, by the following roll call vote. And they have a roll call vote. First, verbal. Let's do it verbal. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> first and last name so many times since I was growing up in my mom's house. <laughs> yeah. I always had my middle name in there. Glenn Thomas Pro, what have you done? Uh, I've got a few things I want to say, but if it's okay with the board, I'm going to go sit over there. And I'll go control. back to my seat if that's yeah, okay. And then we can take some pictures later. Yeah. So thank you for these. President Hernandez, thank you. Board, thank you. I, I really appreciate it. Uh, what do you say when your career is coming to an end? You know, it's a, it's a momentous time in my life. So and I put a lot of thought into this and I thought about, do I make a poem about it or do I do an interpretive dance? What do I do? <laughs> so I'll, maybe I'll just say a few words. Um, I found, uh, I gave the board my notice back in June. Uh, my contract asked for a six month notice, so I gave that notice. Uh, and it feels like ever since then, it's been a series of lasts. Almost every day I go through, I'm experiencing something for the last time. And it's been, uh, it's been interesting. So back in June, we uh, approved the MOU with the employees. That was a big milestone for me and, and for the board and for the, for the staff as well. Uh, we approved the budget. Both of those are the last times I'm going to do, right? I'm never going to do another budget, never going to do another MOU. I represent the, the water district uh, like at Encina and the County Water Authority. I've been to my last board meetings for both of them. I've been to my last general manager's meeting for both of them. So uh, a little little difficult. Uh, my last work conference was back in September. I went to WEFTEC uh, back in Chicago, which is fitting because I'm from Chicago. So it feels kind of full circle, right? Came out here in 1986 from there and then kind of go back for my last work trip was kind of cool. Um, this morning was my last meeting with my managers, so that was that was nice. It was it was touching, and it's, you can probably tell it's uh, the emotions are get the closer I get to it, the more the emotions are rising to the top. So, uh, and tonight is my last board meeting, so that's uh, one of the one of the last, right? Only got a couple more lasts, and I'll touch on one of those in a bit. But each of those lasts has been a really a poignant reminder that my working career is coming to an end. So, and it's it's crashing down on me. Uh, and the last last that I'm kind of dreading will be on Friday, December 29th, when I walk out those doors for the last time as a Viacitos employee. And, that, and that's going to be a tough one. Uh, I may have told some of you this, but uh, in, in the process of getting ready to retire, you have to file with PERS, and I have another agency I have to uh, file with. And it's all electronic now, and I always envisioned that I'd be joyously hitting the send button while I'm drinking champagne with the other hand. And it, <laughs> It wasn't like that. It was a surprising moment that I kind of paused. It's like, do, am I sure I want to do this? But uh, I did, and, and that, that brings me to where I am right now. So I leave amongst uh, mixed emotions, certainly, but uh, my time here has been amazing, and I've enjoyed all of it. But I'm ready for the next phase of life with uh, myself and my wife. 
So um, anybody who's attended our Water Academy knows that I like to, uh, James, if you can advance one, knows that I like to put things in terms of numbers. So at the Water Academy, I put numbers up there and try to relate it. I think it helps with the storytelling and gives some context. So James, if you can hit one. So these are some of the numbers that I'm going to talk about. Don't try to remember these. There won't be a quiz, but if you get hit one more, I'll go through them one at a time. So 37, 37 years of professional experience. So I graduated in 1986, came here from Chicago, took a job in the aerospace industry, worked there for six years. But then the last 31 years of my professional experience have all been public service. It's all been with a government agency, County of San Bernardino, City of Carlsbad, City of Encinitas, and now ending here with Vicedos Water District. You can get one. So seven, the, the next number, uh, seven years here at Vicedos. So my last seven years of my career uh, is, is here, and I've loved it. I just absolutely loved every, every minute of it. So it's been great. If you can hit it. So this number is pretty odd, not just because it ends in a five, but because it's a very specific number, uh, 2,605. So 2,605 days ago, my wife and I sat on that side of the boardroom, and it was on October 16th of 2000, or October 19th of 2016, and that's when the board approved my contract. So that's uh, that number of days I calculated the other day, but that moment stays with me. I remember sitting in there, and I'll, I'll reference my wife a little bit later in here too. Next number. So 111,721. According to our most recent census, this is the number of employ or a number of customers that rely on the services that we provide. So this next couple of sentences is going to be geared towards our customers. If I could address them directly, I would, but I can't. Uh, this is a top-notch organization. And I know people think that they pay too much money for water and wastewater services, but I wish they could get to know this organization better, and they wouldn't think that same way anymore. I mentioned the Water Academy. My wish, and I know it's an impossible wish, but I wish we can get every one of our customers to go through the Water Academy and get to meet our folks, get to un meet, uh, understand, better understand what we do, and that's not realistic. For those um, uh, customers that can't attend the Water Academy, I would encourage them to come to a board meeting, get to know all of you better, get to understand how this organization works, and interact with our staff. Our folks are out in trucks all the time, so if a member of the public sees us, one of our Vicedos employees, talk to them, get to know them better. And if the public doesn't want to take my word for it I, about what a great organization, I'd encourage them to come into the boardroom and look at the back wall where you see all those awards. And it isn't just us talking. It's not the general manager. It's not the board. These are industry experts that say, this is a top-notch organization. We have awards back there for IT, finance, customer service, water quality, engineering. The list goes on and on. And that, that's what makes, I think, makes this a great organization. Go ahead, James. So five, you may see that number five on the left. This is all of you. I want to talk about you all. Um, thank you for your leadership, and thank you for your service. You're all elected at large by members of the public, and your role is to represent them, and I think you do an outstanding job of that. Uh, you bring very diverse opinions and beliefs and experiences, but somehow you make it all work, right? It all comes together, and you mix that together, and you guys are making the right decisions every time. And what impresses me the most, not just you five, but the board members that I've served under previously, is you always keep the public's best interest in mind. And that's what you're elected to do, and to your credit, you do that all the time. So thank you to all five of you. I do want to single out two of you, Director Ella Tharp and Director Hernandez. You were part of the original board that hired me. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the opportunity and for your leadership. I appreciate it. So also on that board was Director Evans. Director Evans uh -huh. is back here today. So, Betty, thank you. Thank you for coming. And directors Martin and Sinella. So, collectively, thank you to that or the original five, and thank you to all of you. I do appreciate it. And I will say uh, thanks for your trust and the opportunity you gave me. But if I've contributed one-tenth to this organization as much as I've gotten out of it, then I can leave here a very happy person. So, um, anyway, next, next slide. Uh, 109. This is the number of employees that report up through the general manager's office, uh, and I want to thank all of them. Uh, this doesn't get, all the work that we do doesn't get done by the general manager. It doesn't get done by the management team. It's done by these 109 employees, and I want to thank them all for their hard work. They're all collectively committed to their craft. They always pursue uh, education and certif certifications, and they impress me every day. It's, it's really, really amazing, and I... I think their knowledge and their work ethic and their commitment to public service and excellence 
they set this organization apart, quite frankly, and we get a lot of employees from other agencies that can't wait to work at Vicedos. Uh, the, I think the board and the organization be, should be thankful that we have these, this quality of employees, and I think those employees should be very thankful that they work for such a great district. So it's a, it's a two-way ar arrangement, right? James, if you hit the next one. Uh, so of those 109, I want to point out just two in particular real quickly, and it's Ann Johnson and Anthony Flores. So Ann, Ann couldn't be with us today, but Anthony is. And, you know, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes to make things like this happen, and Anthony and Ann are the ones that do that. They try to keep me on track and keep me from going off the rails. They put the meeting agendas together. They do the minutes. They cor corral the five, you know, cats that we have up here to try to make sure you show up. And uh, thank you, Anthony, and thank you, Ann, for everything that you do. All right, next one, another number five, and this is the management team. So I apologize, I won't be looking at you, but uh, this is all directed to all of you. So this is James and Ed and Jason and Wes and Denise. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, you've made my job so much easier. Uh, you guys are all rock stars. You're all amazing at what you do. And whenever we deal with a difficult issue, whenever I have to deal with a di difficult issue, it's them I go to. It's, they're my sounding board. I bounce ideas off of them and I really trust what they have to say. So it's been amazing support. Uh, and I know I leave this organization knowing that we're in really good hands, and, and that's important. I won't be leading the organization anymore, but I will continue to be a Viacitos customer. And it is, it is comforting to know that their, that continued leadership is still here. Very important to me. I do wanna give a shout out to Rondi Emanuel. Rondi left, Rondi had Denise's position before. She left about eight months ago. She beat me to the punch, but uh, she was, a, she was also a part of a great management team, so hi to Rondi. Um, I guess maybe just some individual things to James. Congratulations, the board made an excellent de decision in picking the new uh, general manager. Uh, to Ed, uh, where's Ed? Ed's over there. Um, Ed's an amazing manager in O&M. Half the people in this organization report through Ed's organizational structure, and he, he's a great leader. His folks love him, they're, they're very productive, partly because of what a great leader he is. Ed's made it pretty publicly known that he's a year behind me. And I just want to tell him that this year is going to fly by, my friend. It's going to come by so fast. And then he'll be dealing with the emotions that I'm dealing with. And I have a, I have a feeling he's going to get a little choked up when he gets to the end there. Um, let's see. Uh, Wes, uh, you've taken us to new heights in financial reporting and accountability. And thank you. You're, you're an amazing CFO. And I think it really lends itself to public credibility and accountability. So, so thank you. Keep up the good work. Getting the AAA is great, but uh, I wish there was a quadruple A, but I, mean, I know you'd get us there, but, but there isn't. Um, Jason couldn't be here tonight, our district engineer. He had another function, but uh, yeah, Jason, I always had high hopes for him with the organization, and about four or five years ago, he left, went to a competing sister agency, but we were able to bring him back. I think he always wanted to stay here. It's just the opportunities weren't here at that time. When James got promoted, we pulled Jason back, and... Uh, he's a very important part of the future of this organization. And last but not least is Denise. So Denise has only been here six months, but she's doing a great job. Uh, she filled in for Rondi, and uh, she's learning a lot. She's contributing a lot, and uh, this organization is really going to need to lean on her. There's a lot of changes and things that will be re re uh, uh, required out of the HR and uh, um, regulatory environment, and Denise will be there to, to meet the challenges. So James will be your new GM, effective January 1. And again, you made a great decision. And the future is really bright for Viacitos. So you can click us one more. So one, um, <coughs> give me a second. Um, my wife, um, it's gonna be tough. Um, thank you for coming tonight, I appreciate it. Um, I think it's so fitting that she's here tonight like she was 2,605 days ago. And she's here tonight. She was there at the beginning, she's there at the end, she's been with me the whole time. And that's, uh, you can't do this job without that support at home, so that, that's really important. Um, this job can be demanding. It's demanding on your time and your, on your attention and your ability to focus on other things. So I want to thank her for a few things. Is Thanks for accommodating the missed meals and the missed uh, fun things with friends and family because I was at a board meeting or I was at a conference. Thank you for that. Uh, thanks for understanding when my attention is divided. I can't always concentrate 100% on what you're saying because this job gets in your head. And I'm terrible at sharing my burdens with other people. My wife <coughs> thinks she'd be the first one to say that. So 
I'm not always 100% there, and for that I apologize. And mostly I want to thank her for humoring me when we travel the world and I can't stop focusing on public works stuff. <laughs> so we'll be on a, in a castle and a mountain in Germany, and all I can think about is, how do they get the water up here? <laughs> it's up so high. Or we're walking on the streets in Venice, and they don't allow cars in the streets, and I'm wondering, how do they clean their sewers? How does the vector truck get here? <coughs> so that's a, it's a sickness. I know I have a problem. I'm making a public <laughs> acknowledgement, but, uh, and I'm ready to start working on it. But uh, to my wife, I'm so happy our, our professional lives got to intersect. It's, it's really amazing. Through the Bill Dean Water Leadership Program, our career paths intersected. And most couples in different fields don't get that opportunity, and I really appreciated that. Uh, I've always known she's an amazing teacher. I've talked to her students. I've talked to the parents of her students. I've talked to other teachers and principals. She gets the highest marks everywhere. But to see it firsthand is amazing. And you're a rock star. And you, you surpassed everything I thought you'd be. And thank you for being here tonight. I do appreciate it. So that's it. Uh, thank you, President Hernandez. Thank you, board. Thank you, staff. Thank you, management team. It's been an amazing run. Uh, it's, uh, it's going to be tougher as these days tick by when I get closer to December 29th, and I don't think I could have made this, this, these comments if it was two days before I left. So thank you for your time. Thank you for indulging me to, to speak for so long here. I try not to speak this much at a board meeting, but uh, what are you going to do to me? If I, <laughs> <laughs> so with that, I would invite the board down to come take a series of photos with myself, my wife, and the management team, if you would. So. Very good. and zero regrets. And then, <laughs> this is a great organization. I'm so happy to have been a part of it. So, What would you yeah. like first? Let's start with me and the board. Okay. And start there, and then yeah. I'll bring in my wife for the, okay. after that, and then we can just maybe bring in layers of like, the managers, yeah, yeah, yeah. too. Yeah. So I'm going to move with or without the plaque. What should I do, Chris? I don't think you need it. Yeah. Yeah. Where do you want me to move? It's in the middle. Yeah. 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 Right. Okay. So yeah. We'll stick you on the end. Yeah. 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 Do you want to say anything? Yeah, right there. We're pretty good, huh? Three, one, two, three. Nice job, guys. Open. Pretty good. Let me try Show hands. Let me shake your hand. Got one more after. One, two, three. Here comes the grand finale. One day up there. One, two, three. Looks like Gene in there. Yeah, who can be yeah. the management yeah. team? Okay. Yeah. Here. Board in or board out? No, we'll be board in. We'll be board in and then I'll do one board out. Yeah, yeah. we're going to have to, we're we're gonna have to layer up. So here. Guys are going to have to layer it up. We're going to have to layer it up. Some of the yeah. tall ones maybe. Yeah. 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 The board in front of we'll yeah, the board see behind. Or how about staff in the windows? Yeah, I'll staff in the windows. Yeah, in the windows. Can you guys see that? You know what? We're going to have to have the news come. Safety person would not be happy with this, but oh, yeah, there's there's a ladder right there. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. I got the pictures. Okay. Don't let it. Yeah, I know. Wow. You spotting them, Chris? Yep. All right. Okay, on three. One, two, three. Well, that looks good. Three here. One, two, two and a half. All right, perfect. All right. You want Gene in, that in one of those? Sure, one more. Yeah, one more. Ah. <laughs> After we move. You know? I'll move over. You know? I have my window. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
And so maybe yeah, one with just your senior yeah, staff. Yeah, the senior staff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. So board members just hang hey, out with the hey, for a second. Hey, Denise. Hey, Denise. Hey, Denise. Yeah, Denise, yeah, Denise. that includes you. What part of senior staff did she get? Oh, I didn't hear Oh, I'm senior, so I couldn't hear you. How do you want us? Oh, no, this might be appropriate. Look right towards us. All this way? Yeah, it's about like that. Uh, and maybe in the middle. Not only too close. Yeah, you don't want to touch them. Accountants, you can't touch. Two, three. Make a little check here. I was going to raise my arm. Okay, here it goes. One, three. One, two, three. I'm going to come a little closer. One, two, three. You want Gene in there with this? <laughs> no, sorry. But I, I like, Betty, can you come up? I'd like to get a shot with Betty. Sure. Oh. Well, I'm going to do this while, uh, there we go. Okay. Uh, you know I'd run into right? you. Yeah. It's going to take a while. Oh, yes, oh, of course you do. Oh, you aren't going to get away with that. <laughs> do you want me to? Oh, no. Oh, God. Your wife's right there. <laughs> <laughs> Try not to get too hard. Right. <laughs> Maybe have them back a little bit because that light's in here. Oh, yeah. That's, that's better. Yeah. That's just better. Now we have glowing. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, just your angelic glow now. One, two, three. Okay. One more. So, okay. Three. Oh, honey, we're now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Great. Thank you so much. All right. One more check. Moving on with the agenda, consent items. Does anyone have an a item they'd like to move from the consent calendar? Seeing none, entertain a motion to approve the consent calendar. So moved. Second. Second. Please vote. And it passed unanimously. On to the action items, item 2.1, annual board transition. I am going to change the order of this a bit. I'm going to move that uh, we have Director Boyd Hodson as our board president for the rest of 2023 and 2024. Now, do we have any public speakers to that issue? We do not. Uh, do we have any other questions to that issue? If, if you're making a motion, then you probably need to talk about the vice president too. Oh, it would become who to send to the vice president because it's very both the good. President, uh, by our practice and by our order, it would be Director Pennick. Pennick, I would add to that motion that we elect Director Pennick as vice president. And now, I made the motion. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Very good. Uh, please vote. And it's unanimous. And Happy to pass the bill. Thank you. I'll say a few words. Uh, first, I'm grateful to my colleagues for the affirmative vote and again to President Hernandez for your service. Thank you. As my first official act as president of the Vallecitos Water District, I will offer a land acknowledgement the source of which is the collaboration between the California Indian Culture and Sovereignty Center and Cal State San Marcos American Indian Studies Program. Going forward, a land acknowledgement will immediately follow the call to order on the agenda, and I'll provide a written copy for display on the screen behind the dais for our next meeting. So you may be wondering, what is a land acknowledgement? A land acknowledgement is a formal statement that recognizes and respects the indigenous peoples as traditional stewards of this land. It acknowledges their enduring relationship that exists between indigenous peoples and their traditional lands. To offer a land acknowledgement is an act of conciliation that makes a statement regarding the traditional land of the indigenous people who have called and still call the land home before and after the arrival of settlers. I'll now read the land acknowledgement. 
We acknowledge that the land on which we gather is the traditional territory of the Luiseño Payam Kawisham people. Cal State University San Marcos and its surrounding areas are still home to the six federally recognized bands of the La Jolla, Pala, Palma, Pachanga, Rincon, Sababa, Luiseño Payam Kawisham people. It is also important to acknowledge that this land remains the shared space among the Kupanga Wiksham, Kupinyo, Kumeyaay, and Ipe peoples. As my second official act, as president, I would like to honor the women who have served on this board before me. And I see one in the audience, Betty Evans. Thank you for coming. Oh, you're so welcome. <laughs> so, in the 60 years of the Vallecitos Water District, there have been seven women on the board. Those who have come before me are Margaret Betty Ferguson, November 1978 to December 2013, Marianne Newport, November 1981 to December 1995, <clears throat> Bernita K. Rutherford, December 1983 to November 1988, Amy Blaylock, August 1989 to September 1990, Trish Hannon, February 1997 to January 1999, and again, November 1999 to December 2010, and Betty Evans, December 2012 to December 2020. I met with Betty Evans when I had decided to run for Water District. And she was encouraging and supportive. Thank you for your mentorship. <clears throat> I didn't expect to uh, be so emotional. So as we enter a new chapter in the Vallecitos Water District, my presidency will focus on several key objectives that will drive our strategic plan forward and enable us to continue providing reliable, clean, and affordable water for our customers. And you'll notice that I just referred to our ratepayers as our customers. As someone with two decades of professional marketing, communications, and messaging experience, I appreciate the role of language and perception. Historically, the 111,000 that we just learned tonight 111,000 people in our service area who rely on our ability to provide reliable, clean, and affordable water have been called ratepayers. However, I believe that they are more than a revenue stream. And I invite my colleagues and the Vallecito staff to join me in this cultural shift that I would like to affect and call them customers. I wish I could take credit for this idea, but it came from my husband. He said, ratepayers? Why are you calling them ratepayers? I said, well, that's what they're called. He said, well, they're your customers. And I said, you know, they are. They are our customers. So I'd like to make that change. Secondly, my tenure to date has focused on four areas that I will continue to champion, all with the end goal of leading by example and sustaining our district into the next decades and beyond. We will continue to forge strategic partnerships to elevate our presence in the community and mission efficacy. To date, we partner closely with educational institutions in the city of San Marcos, and I look forward to enhanced opportunities to collaborate. Can you pass me a tissue? <laughs> I shouldn't have given mine to you. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Excuse me. Before I participated in the strategic planning process, the words climate change did not appear in our mission-driven documentation. Climate change threatens our business practices, our economy, our water supplies, and our existence. We will continue to center climate change readiness and mitigation in our internal practices and forward trajectory. I've led several initiatives supporting diversity, equity, inclusion, and access here at Vallecitos. Data show that organizations that adopt DEINA have higher employee morale and satisfaction better recruitment and retention, and enhanced bottom lines. We will continue to strive for diversity, equity, and inclusion 
so that we may boldly face the impending wave of industry retirements, case in point, and position ourselves competitively as we go forward. Finally, the present operations model that encourages water conservation while deriving key revenue streams from water sales is not sustainable, and we all know this. It's not sustainable here in our district, it's not sustainable at San Diego County Water Authority or at Metropolitan. So we will explore ways to be fiscally innovative to decrease reliance on water rate increases for our sustainability and viability. I invite my colleagues to join me in these directions as we move into the next year. Director Grosset, you have shown keen understanding and interest in the district finances with measurable outcomes. And I look forward to your continued creativity and innovation in this regard. Director Elithar, I admire your commitment to the environment and your wisdom that stems from decades of experience in the water industry. And I look forward to continuing to collaborate with you as we seek to be good stewards of the environment. Vice President Pinnock, congratulations. The risk management lens through which you approach our duties is refreshing and it challenges us all to think differently and I appreciate that. I'm looking forward to continuing to learn from you. Director Hernandez, outgoing President Hernandez, as the longest tenured member of the board, I admire your commitment to our community and the Texan in me likes your straight talking attitude. Thank you again for your service. General Manager Pruim, I've come to respect your creativity, savviness, competence in navigating complex negotiations with other water districts, staffing contracts, and the day-to-day -day challenges that come with delivering water to over 100,000 people. I admire your leadership, and I'm a better leader for having worked with you. Thank you. I wish you all the best in your retirement, and you'll be missed. And finally, incoming general manager, Gumpel. This is such an exciting time. You've impressed me with your ability to build relationships and your knowledge of the water industry. And I look forward to working with you. So thank you again to my colleagues. Let's roll up our sleeves, let's get to work. I guess it's, I'm up now, right? <laughs> you are. Okay. Moving on to action item 2.2, the fiscal year 2022-2023 audit and annual comprehensive financial report. Yeah, I'll, I'll, we... I'll intro this really okay. quickly and then turn it over to Wes, who will then turn it over to our okay. auditor. So one of the things that we do every year, it's not just a good business practice, but it's actually a requirement, and we have to perform an audit, and we perform an, uh, a, a final report, a financial report at the end. So we're here tonight to present the results of the audit and the, the uh, financial report. So I'll turn it over to Wes and he can introduce our consultant. Good evening, President Boyd Hodgson, members of the board. Um, we're gonna be presenting on the audit for fiscal year 2023. Uh, our auditors this year were the Poon Group and Coley Delaney from the Poon Group is here tonight to present the results of the audit and then Jody Coco will actually present a sort of management's discussion of, of the audit. So with that, I'll give it, turn it over to Coley. All right, thanks, Wes. Are we uh, gonna put slides up or? Oh yeah, we got them over here. And then, uh, will I control them or you guys do? Or... Okay. Cool. So uh, I guess keeping with the theme of numbers for, uh, for tonight. Um, <clears throat> uh, my name is Coley Delaney. I am a partner with the Poon Group. Uh, and we ha I have a, a brief presentation for you guys here tonight uh, to kind of go over uh, the results of the June 30, 2023 uh, fiscal year audit. So uh, next slide. Oops. 
All right, so <clears throat> just briefly, uh, scope of work to kind of tell you what we audited, what, uh, what we did not audit in that document. Um, go over some audit responsibilities, which is a required communications under, uh, audit, under auditing standards. Uh, <clears throat> brief review of our uh, approach to the audit. Uh, there was a uh, governmental accounting standards board accounting change this year that did affect uh, the district's financial statements versus last year. And I will do uh, a kind of 30,000 uh, foot overview of the financial statements. And I will uh, talk about some key financial indicators and then end with the, uh, with the audit results. So on the next slide for the scope of work, uh, one more. All right, so <clears throat> we did audit. Uh, the, the document that is presented to you uh, tonight is the annual comprehensive financial report, which is made up of an introductory section, section which contains the transmittal letter, uh, the prior year's uh, GFOA certificate for excellence <coughs> in financial reporting, the org chart, service area map, et cetera. Uh, this, this section is unaudited, uh, means, and, we not, and we do not provide an opinion on it. Uh, the financial section, this is, this is where, where we come into play. The statement in deposition, a balance sheet essentially, the revenues, expenses, changes in deposition is the income statement. The statement of cash flows and the notes to the financial statements and also some required supplementary information, uh, which includes pension and OPEB and uh, other post-employment benefit schedules. Uh, all those are all audited uh, except for the, uh, what we refer to as the required supplementary information, which is the pension and OPEB uh, schedules. And then lastly, there is the statistical section, which shows tenure information for financial trends, revenue capacity, debt capacity, uh, et cetera. And this section is unaudited as well. Next, I'd like to talk about some audit responsibilities. Again, this is a required communication. Uh, and I will start with management's responsibility. So management is responsible for the financial statements. Uh, and they are responsible for, for presenting those financial statements in accordance uh, with US GAAP. They're responsible for adopting sound accounting policies and establishing and maintaining internal controls over financial reporting and compliance. They're responsible for providing the auditors with evidence supporting the amounts and disclosures in the financial statements. Uh, and ultimately, they are responsible, management is responsible for the uh, fair presentation of financial statements that are free from uh, error, uh, from material misstatements, whether due to fraud or error. And lastly, management is responsible for detecting, uh, preventing and detecting fraud. Uh, next slide. As the auditors, uh, we are required uh, to perform the audit in conformity with generally accepted auditing standards uh, and additionally above and beyond that, uh, government auditing standards. We're required to communicate our, uh, with those charged with governance, which is part of what I'm doing here today. We are also required to assess the audit risk of uh, internal control over financial reporting. Uh, however, we do that to uh, kind of guide our procedures uh, and, and aid in our, uh, our risk assessment, but we do not provide uh, an opinion on the district's internal controls over, fun, internal, uh, over, uh, over financial reporting. Uh, we are responsible for determining whether those financial statements are fairly presented. And then we are responsible for rendering our opinion on those financial statements uh, and issuing recommendations to management uh, if we do have any and communicating any findings uh, to, the, uh, to the board. Next slide. So for, for our approach to the audit, we do use a four-phase uh, four-phased approach, uh, beginning with detailed planning, which is where we kind of uh, <clears throat> determine whether or not there are significant unusual transactions uh, during the year, new GASB uh, pronouncements that need to be implemented. Uh, we also then, in our phase two, we do a risk-based review of internal controls over systems and compliance. So what that included this year was financial reporting, uh, the revenue cycle, uh, the purchasing and expenditure cycle, uh, payroll and related liabilities, which also includes um, pension and, and, and OPEB liabilities, and general IT controls. Then we validate, validate the account balances. That's the part you're all thinking of when you think of the, think of the audit. Uh, and then we worked uh, for Viacitos. We actually worked in conjunction with uh, finance management to uh, prepare the financial statements. Uh, and then we do issue our audit opinions. So, so there's one, uh, one accounting change uh, that everyone kind of got geared up for uh, this year, but it turned out that it didn't really have a, a, a huge effect on the, uh, on the district's financial statements. This was for re reporting uh, subscription-based information technology arrangements. Previously, if you had a, a license with, say, Microsoft or something like that, you would just expense it as, as you go along. 
This new guidance says basically if you have a non-cancelable contract, you need to report that uh, asset as a, a, a intangible right to use asset and you also need to take a liability onto your book. So uh, we did bring both of those on and since the district does show 2022 numbers next to their 2023 numbers in the financial statement, uh, we did retroactively adjust those, uh, those numbers uh, from 2022 as well. So next slide. So just for the, uh, again, 30,000 foot uh, overview of the financial statements, this is the, the, the top half of the, uh, uh, of the balance sheet, the statement in net position essentially. Uh, so we have your assets and your deferred outflows of resources. Uh, we said we had an unrestricted assets on increase in cash and, cash uh, cash and investments of 5.6 million. Restricted assets saw a decrease in cash and investments of 3.5 million. Uh, and capital asset additions during the fiscal year exceeded depreciation by about 3.8 by 3.8 million. That's why the uh, capital assets went up. Uh, we are going to see some uh, some swings in some pension related items uh, this year versus versus last year. So you'll see one there is the uh, pension deferred outflows. Uh, those increased significantly uh, from last year, and that was mainly due to Calpers uh, investment returns uh, not meeting their expectations, and this was one year uh, one year behind. Next slide. Uh, bottom, bottom half of the uh, statement of net position. So we have reliabilities, deferred inflows uh, of resources and net position. Uh, not a lot of big changes overall outside of uh, pension items again. Uh, the district reported a net pension asset last year of four and a half million, but a, uh, an $11 million liability in 2023. Again, this was mainly due to poor investment earnings by CalPERS, uh, again, back in 2022. Uh, and this is also why uh, the pension-related deferred inflows uh, deferred inflows increased and the deferred, uh, the deferred inflows decreased this year. Uh, and that CalPERS investment loss from 2022 will be uh, recognized in a straight-line manner over the next five years. Uh, but ultimately, the unrestricted net position did increase by 2.4 million, and the total net position net position increased by 6.2 million dollars for the fiscal year. On the next slide is the income statement. I'd like to say it's condensed, but it's really not. And I couldn't figure out which lines to not include. You know, which ones were more important than the others. So that's essentially the whole thing there. But I'll just point out a couple things. Uh, the water sales did decrease by 3.6 million, uh, while the cost of purchased water only fell by a million dollars. So uh, general ad and administrative expenses increased three and a half million, of which a large part uh, is the increase increase in pension expense versus last year. Overall, uh, operating expenses increased by 10.3 million, uh, leaving with the district with an operating loss uh, of 8.1 million this year versus operating income of five, 5 million in 2022. On the next slide, we'll get into the, uh, the non-operating portion of the, uh, of the income statement. Property taxes up slightly, uh, investment returns, in, returns improved in 23 uh, versus last year, uh, total net non-operating revenues increased by 1.1 million, and the total change in net position was 6.3 million in 23, which is down from 17.6 uh, 17, 17 in 2022. Again, a lot of that stuff is related to pension. On the next slide, uh, we're gonna start talking about cash flows here. So operating cash flows from operating uh, activities. Uh, receipts from uh, water and wastewater customers were down a bit in 2023, kind of as we just saw with the charges uh, for service numbers on, on, the, on an earlier slide. Uh, the property taxes increased slightly as well, as already mentioned. On the next slide, we'll get into uh, continuing with the cash flows. This is from, uh, from capital and related financing activities. You'll note in 2022, there was, uh, you know, we have some, some line items missing there. That was uh, in 2022, last year, there was the $25 million of the uh, 2021A uh, COPs that were issued last year. Obviously, those were not issued this year, so that's where a majority of that cash came from last year, while you're seeing those large swings. Uh, and then overall, total change in cash and cash equivalents uh, was 2.1 million positive uh, versus 35.8 million positive last year. But again, a lot of that was from issuance of debt. So skipping forward, just a couple um, just key financial indicators uh, that we'd like to kind of take, take a look at and, and see how you're trending 
of, uh, his, historically. Um, so we're comparing uh, the district to itself, but it, to its past performance. And we have a couple ratios here, starting with the, uh, the current ratio, which, measure, which is uh, current assets over current liabilities, measures the district's ability to pay short-term obligations, or those due within one year. Uh, and so this ratio has increased to almost eight times uh, current assets over current liabilities at June 30, and so this is this is a, a, a very uh, very healthy ratio for uh, for this one. The capital condition ratio is the second one uh, shows the ratio of accumulated depreciation to total depreciable assets, and so what this is is an indicator of the age of the district's assets. Uh, a higher ratio means that you that the assets are older, um, and so this this ratio is is pretty static. However, it is moving a couple, uh, couple percentages, uh, percentage points higher each year. Uh, this is right around where we see with our other district, uh, district clients in the, in the 42 to 46 percent range, so, you, so nothing really to worry about there. The third one uh, is net pension liability to net position. So how much of your net position is taken up by your pension liability? Is it, you know, is it crazy? or is it, is it manageable? Um, and so what we actually see is that last year, because there, the, the district had a net pension asset, the ratio was negative. This year it's up to about 3%, but that still is very low, and it's uh, lower than what you, you've seen uh, historically for the district. Uh, operating margin, it's essentially operating profit. Do operating revenues cover operating expenses? And this does not include depreciation expense. Now, this increased significantly in 2022. Uh, but it is back down uh, to uh, operating revenues just barely covering operating expenses in 2023. So kind of um, similar to, uh, uh, to to how it's been how it's been in the past last year. Again, with the great uh, we actually had um, pension credit or pension income last year. So that was that kind of threw some stuff off last year. But <clears throat> on to so that concludes me talking about the numbers, uh, and so we'll get to the, uh, the audit results. So we, we issued uh, an unmodified opinion, what you would like to refer to as a, uh, as a clean opinion. Um, sometimes boards like to ask us what the alternative is for that, and so those would be like a qualified opinion where we say pretty much everything's fine except for this one little piece. Uh, sometimes <clears throat> another one would be a disclaimer where we basically step back and say, hey, we, we cannot uh, issue an opinion on these financial statements. Uh, and then there's also an adverse opinion, which basically says these, these financial statements are not <laughs> materially fairly stated. Those don't get uh, issued very often because what's really the, what's the, you know, the, the point of that. But um, so anyways, an unmodified slash clean opinion uh, for the district. And what that means is that the financial statements are fairly presented in all material respects. The significant accounting policies have been consistently applied. The estimates used are reasonable, and the disclosures are properly reflected in the financial statements. As far as other results, uh, we are happy to uh, report that we had no disagreements with management, and we noted no material weaknesses or significant deficiencies. I mean, these were things that would be required to be reported to the, uh, to the board, and so we noted none of those in internal controls over financial reporting or compliance, uh, and no accounting issues were noted. And so with that, that concludes my presentation, and I'll turn it over to questions if there are any. Now it's Jody's turn to present. Um, we're going to have to apologize because we're going to be covering some stuff twice here, it sounds like. Um, hers is more of a summary version, though, so um, I'll turn it over to her now. Go ahead, Jody. Good evening, President Boyd Hodgson and members of the board. Today I get to present the annual comprehensive financial report for 22-23. To begin with, this year's wonderful report cover was again created by staff within the district. Thank you to Lisa Urabe for her creative efforts. In addition, staff has been working diligently recording transactions and preparing the act for 
to ensure it is accurate, complete, and fairly presented. Basically, the ACFR is organized into three sections, the introductory, financial, and statistical. Even though the basic financial statements, which include the notes, are the only items within the report that require an audit, including the introductory and statistical sections, provide a more comprehensive financial report and are also required in order to receive the GFOA award. Starting with the financial section, the financial section includes independent auditor's report, management discussion analysis, or MDNA, the financial statements, which are the statement of net position, statement of revenues, expenses, and changes in net position, and the statement of cash flows. Also included in the financial section are detailed notes related to the financial statements and there is some supplementary type of information included at the end of this section. For this presentation, I will focus mainly on the MDNA, which basically provides an overview of this year's financial analysis and highlights. As of 6-30-23, water sales decreased by 3.6 million and that was due to 9% decrease in demand resulting from higher rainfall compared to 2022, as well as some conservation efforts. 6.8 million in capacity fee revenue from development received during 2022-23 was less than expected, given the notable pickup in development as economic activity increases. And construction increased from 11 to 13.7 million or 21.2%. Here is the bottom portion of the statement of revenues, expenses, and changes in net position, which shows that there was a loss before contributions of $5.8 million. And the net position increased by 6.3 million after capital contributions of 12 million. Something else to highlight is that the district made the final payment on the 2012 Certificates of Participation 10-year debt and did not incur additional debt. The next few slides include some current year to prior year comparisons, capital assets increased as a result of new construction, other assets decreased as a result of decreases in net pension asset and the net OPEB asset, there's a $7.4 million increase in deferred outflows due to significant increase in deferred outflows related to actuarial assumptions. Non-current liabilities increased $7.8 million due to an increase in the net pension liability. And finally, defer deferred inflows decreased by $4 million due to a significant decrease in deferred inflows related to investment earnings on pension. The district has three major sources of revenue. 38% of total revenues are water sales, 25% sewer service charges revenue, and 20% ready to serve charges revenue. It's also worth noting that property tax revenue increased by approximately 543,000 due to increases in property values and redevelopment agency revenue. And then on the expense side, the significant increases highlighted in yellow are primarily due to GASB 68 adjustments, which you may recall are related to pension costs. In addition, Meadowlark expenses increased as a result of increased chemical and power costs. Collections increased uh, due to an increase in outside services. Transmission and distribution increase is due to more main breaks in the current year. And then other expenses increased by about $2.8 million, primarily due to recognizing a loss on investment in Encino Wastewater Authority. The district recognizes uh, the change in Encino's assets, liabilities, and changes in net position based on the district's ownership in Encino. Uh, 
Um, the MDNA also includes some information about restrictions, commitments, and limitations of the district. The district has two projects that have been contracted for at least the design phase, totaling $1.8 million. The project names are 16-inch emergency bypass pipeline rehab and Palos Vista pump station motor starters upgrade. Another major commitment of the district is its long-term debt, which was about $69.6 .6 as of 6-30-23. Next are economic factors that are considered when preparing the 2024 budget, which are also discussed in the MDNA. A slight increases in residential water usage were taken into consideration during the budget process. Rate increases determined by the cost of service study were built in the budget. Increases in construction and development were assumed. And increase in costs due to increasing regulatory compliance were also taken into account. That concludes the financial section of the ACFR. The next topic will be the introductory section. And the introdu introductory section of the ACFR includes a letter of transmittal, which gives some background information about the district and it describes the district um, as a reporting entity. It also talks about the economic conditions and outlook and district awards and accomplishments. The intro section also includes the GFOA certificate, an organization chart, list of principal officers, and a service area map. Next is the statistical section. The statistical section has five areas of focus. Financial trends, which includes financial performance and well-being information. Revenue capacity, includes detailed information about revenues and expenses broken down by source. Debt capacity, includes outstanding debt by type and debt service coverage ratio. Demographic and economic information, which includes assessed valuation, population information, and largest employers, and operating information, which includes employees by function and capital assets by type. The stats section includes 16 total tables with 10 years of data in each and provides readers with more information that improves transparency. And finally, what's next? Next, Finance will be completing a very detailed checklist required by GFOA to apply for the award for the Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting. And with that, staff's recommendation is that the board consider and accept the 2023 Annual Comprehensive Report. Thank you, and we are available for questions if there are any. Thank you, Wes, and thank you, Jody. Uh, are there any questions from the board? Director Grossett. Um, <clears throat> congratulations on uh, audit, and it's, it's not an easy process for no one that's been through a, a business-based audit. It's uh, at any time they can email you with a question um, or that needs to be backed up by you know multiple sources, and it's a good uh, reality check that you're doing everything the right way. So kudos to you, and I hope sincerely that you get that award. Uh, it seems very deserved based on this report here and thank you for conducting the audit and making sure that we are all doing everything according to the common practices and and is backed up by true in fact any other comments or questions okay then may I have a motion to move staff's recommendation to accept the 2022-2023 annual comprehensive financial report ACFR 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 I'm getting it. Um, do I have a motion? Yes. Motion made by Director Hernandez. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Director Vice President, excuse me, Vice President Pinnock. Come, Jim. <laughs> Any other discussion before we vote? Okay, let's vote, please. And it passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you again for your work, yeah. and thank you for being here. Thank you. Okay, moving on to action item 2.3, award professional services agreement for the land outfall west condition repair and rehabilitation project. 
Yeah, so one of the district's most important wastewater assets is our land outfall, which takes the sewer down to Encina for treatment before disposal. And uh, we're doing some work on that. And Eric Bennett's going to kind of walk you through actions taken to date and what's pending and what's in front of us next. So, Eric, with that, take it away. Yes, sir. Good evening, President Boyd, Boyd Hodgson and directors. Uh, this item is to address the district's land Alpha West pipeline, uh, the results of a recent condition assessment on it, uh, the needed actions based on the, the high, priority, high priority items from that condition assessment, and the selection of a consultant to help us achieve our goal. All right, first we'll begin with a very brief history of the pipeline. Uh, then we'll discuss some of the results from the condition assessment performed in 2021. After that, we'll review the high priority, high priority items we are focusing on. Um, and then selecting a consultant and the task they'll perform uh, in efforts to help us address these high priority items. Lastly, we'll discuss the project's budget and how this work affects it. Uh, beginning with the pipeline history, the land outfall was installed in 1986 and connects the district's lift station one to the Encina water pollution control facility. The pipeline ranges from 24 to 54 inches in diameter and is constructed of various material types, including vitrified clay, fiberglass, and steel. The, for the purposes of this project, we are focusing on the western portion of the land outfall, which runs from El Camino Real to the Encina water pollution control facility. And that you can see that pictured here on the map on, on the bottom of the slide. This portion is called the Land Outfall West. It is 3.4 miles in length and was the focus of a thorough condition assessment in 2021. Another item to note is while the district owns this pipeline, um, uh, the city of Carlsbad and Buena Sanitation District both have capacity rights on this pipeline. Uh, Buena Sanitation has 3.5 or 3.75 million gallons of capacity rights, and that equates to about 18% of shared responsibility. The city of Carlsbad has a 5 million gallon uh, day capacity right, which equates to about 20%, 24% of shared responsibility on this pipeline. As mentioned previously, in November 2021, a condition assess assessment was performed on the land outfall west. Uh, the assessment involved the use of CCTV and sonar technologies. This assessment was performed by Hope Consulting, who recorded many of the items of interest, with some valued as high priorities for the district. These items of interest included structural defects, such as fractures in the VC VCP pipe, liner failures, uh, infiltration and in deposits, you know, heavy grease accumulation, and then he uh, heavy debris accumulation uh, with an estimated amount of 1,200 cubic feet of debris material within reach 55, and that's the middle picture here, and that reach uh, runs under the Interstate 5, so it's pretty high priority. After reviewing the condition assessment results and the recommendations provided in a technical manual, staff has pr prioritized cleaning, repair, and rehabilitation of Siphon D, which we'll see here, and the surrounding pipelines and manholes. This includes the rehabilitation of seven manholes, uh, full length lining of four reaches, spot repairs on two reaches to address the infiltration, and significant cleaning efforts under the five freeway.
With the focus on Siphon D and the surrounding areas, staff submitted a request for, request for proposal to our as-needed engineering firms to develop the project, including surveying easements around the work areas, uh, design services, developing construction documents and an implementation plan, and also to assist with coordination with stakeholders throughout the multiple phases of the project. Out of the request sent out, a few firms declined to propose or unresponsive and one submitted and that was Hope Consulting. We were in luck because Hope Consulting was the one who performed the condition assessment so they were well uh, well in line and uh, well prepared to have uh, of the proposal and the knowledge to perform this. And uh, The proposal that they submitted was uh, for $117,131. Uh, so how does this affect our budget? So this project was budgeted in the 23-24 CIP budget with an amount of eight, excuse me, with an amount of $800,000, and with an estimated uh, $20,000 for staff, labor, and overhead, um, and hoax fee of $117,000. Uh, the project's total will be $137,131. But after reimbursements from Buena and Carlsbad, the district's responsibility will be $79,577. I just want to make sure that I'm tracking. We, we budgeted $800,000, and it looks like we are coming in significantly under that $800,000. Correct. That's for this phase of the project. And that, that $800,000 spans over a multi-year period and is going to eventually cover the construction costs. Okay. Um, that are going to be as a result of this design service. Okay. All right. So with that, staff recommends the board of directors authorize the general manager to enter into a professional engineering service agreement with Hope Consulting in the amount of $131,000 for engineering services for the land outfall west repair and rehabilitation project. And with that, I will take any questions if you have any. Okay, thank you for that presentation. Do I have questions from the board? Yes, Dr. Yeah. Thanks, Eric, for the presentation. Are there any particular environmental issues? Uh, I've noticed a lot of the pipelines uh, off-road. Off yeah, they're actually, let me go back to the map where it'll show that. So there are concerns of, um, the gnat catchers and nesting season over here towards this end. But we're gonna be in luck because none of the work we're proposing to do is gonna be excavation. So there's not gonna be any digging up and shouldn't be any real uh, um, issues with running into that. Okay, thanks. And I was wondering how much or what percentage of the total length is uh, each material? Do you know that offhand? You said fiberglass, mm -hmm. VCP, and mm -hmm. RCP, I think. Uh, so the actual footage for each, uh, for the entire land, land outfall or just this section? Uh, for the entire. Oh, I, I don't have those numbers on me. I can get them for you if you would like to. Okay. Yeah, just it's curious if fiberglass was used. Mm, that was specifically for Siphon D under oh, the 5 okay. freeway. Yeah. Okay. And that was installed in 2003 um, when the, the cleaning was last performed. Uh, on there. That's uh, that's a section of Hobos pipe. That's the only place that we use uh, the fiberglass to work there. All right, thank you. Okay, Dr. Rosa. Um, that's my office right there on the screen, right next to Costco. So any <laughs> any, any traffic disruptions planned? Yeah, there shouldn't be too many. Uh, most of the most of the work would be at night because it would require um, significant pumping pump around operations and coordination with Buena Sanitation to, to pump at night during low flow into their outfall that goes into Encina. Thank you. Thank you. Any other yes. um, Thank you. Eric, appreciate it. So no excavation. Is this relining? Is that what we're doing? Correct. Okay. And um, so do we make the decision with Buena Sanitation and with Carlsbad in, what, 40%? Do they just trust us? We're gonna we go through the work and then we send them the bill. We don't have to go through them or anything like that to get approval. 
No, there, there, there's heavy um, coordination for them. Before we brought it to board, we had, we had meetings with them to let them know that we were uh, moving forward with this project, get their buy-in, get their comments. Okay, so they do have a buy-in. Okay. Oh, yeah. Just wanted to make sure that was happening. Of course. They're good with it before we just, like, we're going to go and spend 117 and here's your bill. Yeah. Okay. It's not that easy. <laughs> okay. It would be nice, I know. Um, no, good job. Thank you. I have a question. Thank you again for this work. So, you know, we, we, we were shown the approximate budget and then how much it's going to cost. And I, I want to make sure that I understand because that looks like a terrific bargain. If we budgeted 800000 and it's going to cost seventy nine and change, you know, given the reimbursements. So looking at the map that, oh. that you showed with the, with the manholes, am I to understand that that 79 is only going to cover a, a part of this length right here, this line? And please help me understand which parts it will cover. So that's without construction. Correct. This, the, this phase of it, this portion, the 79,000, is for design services. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I missed that. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I get it now. Thank you. The, um, mm -hmm. Exactly for the planning and design. Okay. Um, Thank you. As mentioned earlier, the full budget of the eight hundred thousand that that's going to cover the eventual and eventual construction of this phase and hopefully others. Understood. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for reiterating that. I appreciate mm -hmm. it. Any other questions? Yeah. To the president's point, is that in line with your expectations for this portion of the project? It, it actually is. Uh, so we, we thought there would be uh, upwards of around $150,000 or so, including staff time for this portion. Um, the construction estimates on the budget, when we set the budget, were based on last year's number. The construction numbers are probably gone up, but we are getting the design numbers in at or below what we thought. So that's the good news. Uh, we won't make any promises on what the construction numbers are at this point. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other comments or questions? Okay, I will entertain a motion to move staff's recommendation to approve professional services agreement with Hook Consulting. So moved. By Director Ellitharp, and do I have a second? Second. Director Grosset, any other discussion before we vote? Okay, let's vote. <coughs> and it passes unanimously. Thank you, Eric, for that presentation. Okay, action, two, action item 2.4, investment advisory firm selection. Yeah, so the district has over $100 million of our customers' money that we have in reserves, and we invest that money to make sure we're getting proper returns. Some of that is managed internally by staff, and some of it's managed by, uh, by consultants. So uh, Wes is going to make a presentation about a change that we're going to be we're considering or proposing to the board on our external investment management. So Wes, take it away. Good evening again. Um, this should be a brief presentation tonight. We actually brought this to the Finance Committee meeting, um, I think it was on the 14th of November, uh, <clears throat> to talk about the investment advisor selection. Tonight I'm just going to go over sort of one of our strategies for this, which is the investment advisor selection. And this is going to include our investments, some of the background on our investments. And then I'll talk about the investment services solicitation process. And then I'll go over our, how we evaluate the proposals and finally, a staff's recommendation. So, a little background. In May, um, the district and the boards, uh, staff and the board started talking about our investment returns. And with the Fed raising rates um, and the Treasury bills rising, we wanted to make sure we're maximizing our return while maintaining uh, safety and liquidity of our investments. And this was actually in the investment report that was in the board packet in May. And you can see that our returns are the blue squares at the bottom there, and unfortunately we are, we're at the bottom. So in comparison to other agencies and uh, government portfolios, uh, such as LAIF, the county pool, and we compared ourselves to the water authority, uh, we were getting the lowest returns on our investments. Those investments included two portions. Um, a portion of our investments are in securities, and those are uh, managed by a third party outsourced, and they have been since 2018. And th that amount of those securities is $53.6 million. And at the time, they were returning 1.66%. Our internal portion, which is our liquid funds, which is managed by staff, 
It was actually returning 3.01%. Uh, it was $60 million at the time. So the total value of the portfolio was $113.7 million, and the total return was 2.4%. This was in May, and at the time, we decided to do something about being last, um, and it was, we decided to take a two-pronged approach to it. Uh, and <clears throat> that two-pronged approach was looking at our third-party outsourcing as well as looking at our internal investments. This presentation is just going to focus on the third-party outsourcing and what we decided to do to address that. So what we did was we went out and sent out an RFP. So in October 2023, we mailed out an RFP. And we got our responses that were due on October 27th. We received three from qualified firms, um, and those were reviewed by three of our staff here at the district. Two of them demonstrated in industry expertise, excellent references, and had reasonable fees. So we decided to rate those in-house and actually or have an interview with one of them, which would be the top rated one. So first, we rated them based on their, and this is just looking at their proposals, and three of the staff here at the district looked at them and rated them based on their responsiveness and understanding of our RFP and the engagement. And then, went a little too far, the firm experience, their approach to investing and their overall performance, and that would be 35%. We also rated them on the assigned personnel that would be assigned to our to the district and, and working on our um, our project, and that would be 30%. The next criteria would be their fees, and that'd be the final. So the last 25% was fees. So this they were rated not just on fees, but on all of these these items. Um, and two of the firms, as I mentioned, had a very good industry expertise. They were very very close in the ratings. Uh, a lot of similarities. Um, but overall, uh, the ratings came out to be that government portfolio advisors actually got 380 points out of a total of 413, and this is the average of the three raters. Um, PFM was rated, they got 358 points out of a total of 413. Uh, and the main reason for this, because they were very similar, it was a very difficult decision, uh, but overall, <clears throat> the annual fees of the two firms were 27300 for GPA and 48500 for PFM. What is PFM? What's the name of that? PFM is, I don't, yeah, I don't remember what the abbreviation stands for. Um, they actually are the consultants that work with CAMP. They came in here when we had the presentation um, on CAMP. I think Leslie's, I forgot her last Leslie, name, was yeah, actually okay. here to present. Yeah, Murphy. Leslie Murphy, yeah. I, I have a question about the, these criteria. Um, where did you come up with the idea to rate each of these their respective percentages? Is mm -hmm. this a standard business practice? Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is a standard business practice based on how we did it last time in 2018 as well as soliciting to the CSMFO, which is the California Society of Municipal Financial Officers. Back in 2018, I actually emailed all of the members of the CSMFO and requested example RFPs and rating criteria. Uh, at that time, I was given from several agencies and cities examples of how to do it, and, and this was sort of the standard uh, rating. Thank you. So overall, GPA came in. Um, lower in fees and higher rating, and most of the higher rating, they would have been pretty much equal. Uh, PFM is actually a bigger firm. Um, they have more resources. GPA is a little bit smaller, but the overall rating came in for GPA because we'd be saving approximately $20,000 a year by uh, going with GPA. So staff's recommendation is to authorize the general manager to contract with government portfolio advisors. And with that, I'm happy to take any questions. Any questions from the board? Yes. So what's their plan, and how quickly are we going to get there? So uh, I don't, can't really answer the question how quickly we're going to get there, but we did have an interview with them, and I asked a lot of difficult questions. I even asked the question, if you were put in front of our board and asked these questions by Director Grosset, what would your response be? <laughs> good, good. <laughs> and, uh, and their responses were, were much better. And uh, basically, to sum up what they said, the portfolio right now has maturities that are coming due, and about, I think they said, and don't quote me on this, but around 30% of our portfolio is coming, is maturing within the next two years or something like that. So they plan to invest that at much higher rates longer term to increase our investment returns. Their, as I mentioned, their, their responses were, they have good uh, goals and objectives. They even said they were gonna look at our internal liquidity. They did mention that we're too liquid, which I agree with. While it's great to have, you know, 60, $2 million, I think, or $42 million in camp at 5.68%. Camp is very short term. If the economy turns, camp's going to turn with it, and we're going to be all of a sudden way behind the curve. So they said, you're too liquid. We'd really like to get some of that locked up in a little bit longer term investments. I mean, there's there are agencies out there paying 5% right now. And we'll never get to around 10% because it's just not 
reasonable for government, you know, government code and our restrictions that we have. But 5% to 5.88% right now is very reasonable. Yep. So they want to lock us up into more of those types of sure. investments. Five longer to 10 time. years at 5% sounds great. Yep. Right. So, so they, long, they, term, long term is 10 years? Well, we just bought one that was a 5% to 2026 maturity, so it's a little over three years. Um, and we have, I think we have a 2028 maturity at 5.8%. That was on an asset-backed security that we just bought, and you'll see in the investment report on December 13th. So there's, there's some longer, decent returns on longer investments that we can get right now, and GPA has got some good ideas for getting there. And they, they talked about looking at our liquidity and, and making recommendations as far as that, and I don't want to bad talk our current advisors, but I haven't got a lot of that from them. I haven't. There hasn't been like a, hey, we noticed your liquidity is really high. Would you like to give us some of that? Because we've got some good ideas. Excellent. So I felt like I got some comfort from that. Wonderful. Thank you for good job. looking into and mm -hmm. affecting this change. So one of the things that I'm always curious about when we are looking at doing business with vendors is the structure of their company. And you know, as I mentioned earlier, we, we will be continuing to push for diversity, equity, inclusion, and access. So I, I think it is reasonable, and I'm, I, I'm not gonna put you on the spot right now because this is the first time we've talked about it, but I think, I think it is reasonable going forward that when we consider doing business with other companies and contracting with them, that we have an idea of what their policies are. Mm -hmm. um, we know that having a diverse and, and inclusive workforce makes for better business, and we wanna do business with those businesses. So let's, let's make it a habit, you know, as well as asking, if Director Grosset asks you these things, let's also ask, you know, what's, your, what's the structure of your board? You know, how many women are on your board? How many, you know, how many BIPOC people are on your board? Let's make sure that we ask those questions just so we can know. I'll make a good interview question. Mm. Any, any other comments or questions? One, um, is there any other agencies, local agencies, using GPA that you're aware of? <clears throat> Uh, they, yes, there were several, they had three water agencies listed on their uh, references, and uh, I've also, uh, one of our former employees here, one of my staff, had worked with them in Washington. So they're, they're located in Oregon, and that was one of the questions, one of the main things I focused on in the interview was, you're in Oregon, is it going to be an issue, you know, uh, keeping Calif California government code? And all of the, I forgot, the, I think it's called a RISA or whatever, so there's something that all of the investment agencies or firms do, they actually, it kind of overlaps and it, they have each state. And they just overlap your current policy and say, here are the current thing. It, it's computerized, their recommendations as far as what changes happened. So they, they've all got the access to the same you know, information. So it won't be an issue for them. Plus they've got three other water agencies in California that they're, they're, they're working for them now, so. Thank you. Okay. May I have a motion to move staff's recommendation to go with government portfolio advisors as our new advisory firm? Move to approve. Director Hernandez. Second. Second, Director Grosset. Any other discuss discussion or questions before we vote? Okay, let's vote. <coughs> and it passes unanimously. Thank you for your work, your work Wes. Thank you. Okay, I think we are moving on to, that is the end of our action items. Now we have reports. General Manager. I have four, and I'll okay. try to keep them brief. So I mentioned- Is this another last? What's that? Is this another last? Report? It is, it's, it's my last, report. thank you, yes. Now I have three. <laughs> um, so I mentioned during my, when, when I spoke earlier about the awards we've received in the back of the room, so we received another one. Great. This is the President's Special Recognition Award, and this is from Aqua JPIA. So we have three kinds of insurance with them. We have property, liability, and workers' comp. This is for the property one, and we got the President's Award because our, the claims that they paid out to us were less than 20% of the money that we sent to them. So I know Director Pennock would appreciate that. Insurance companies love that. Yeah, that's a very, very low claim percentage rate. So uh, we got that award and they're still processing the workers comp and the liability, but the good news is we got the president's award for the for the property one. So we'll, we'll put that in the back of the room. Uh, number two, this is my last board meeting. So I said it before, but uh, been a, it's been a great run. Um, number three, don't forget we have to convene to the public, what's it called? The finance corporation, finance corporation. meeting. It's a real brief meeting. And number four, although this is my last meeting, I'm still on the books until December 29th. And because my job never ends, I'm gonna be conducting a night visitation of one of our properties. 
It's Carl Strauss at the <laughs> intersection of Armor Light and Las Posas. I want to make sure their water and wastewater services are working fine. So if any of you want to join me and see how to do an inspection of a property, I'd be happy to, to help you. So, Excellent. and that's all I have. Thank you again for everything you've done for me. Thank you. Mr. Gilpin, District Legal Counsel. Uh, good evening. I'm sorry I can't be there. Um, I'll keep with the number theme tonight. Uh, General Manager Pruham, I have three numbers to share. Uh, number three, I have three regrets today. One, I'm sorry I was unable to be there for your last meeting. Um, second, I am sorry I never got to meet your lovely wife who is there. And third, I am really disappointed that I, you did not do the interpretive dance tonight. <laughs> uh, uh, on number two, I would share with you June 2nd, 1925. Uh, that's the day uh, Lou Gehrig famously filled in for a sick Wally Pip on the New York Yankees. Uh, he was a backup that went on to a Hall of Fame career. Uh, like Gehrig, who was a second choice, but left a memorable mark on the Yankees. Uh, you may have been the second choice, but I believe you've left an indelible mark on Valacetus Water District, uh, at least in my tenure here, you've left the place better than it was when you found it. And lastly, number one, uh, I'd like to thank you. This has been a unique and rewarding experience for me working with you. In 34 years of practice, you are the only client who has ever called me General Counsel Gilpin, and you do it <laughs> repeatedly. Uh, with any valued relationship, I'm appreciative for the six years of working with you and in developing our relationship over that six years. Uh, I've grown to truly and truly appreciate your interpretive dance skills, i.e. your ability to adapt to changing circumstances. Uh, we've weathered many challenges during our time together in the negotiations with the Water Authority over DSAL transitions in the organization and the surreal challenges that COVID presented. Um, I will truly miss your professionalism and as a side note, living vicariously through your vacations and adventure with your wife and family. Uh, I truly wish you the best in your retirement. It's been a pleasure working with you. Thank you very much, Jim. Those, those words mean a lot. I've never been compared to Lou Gehrig before. But, uh... <laughs> Thank you. Well said. Okay, San Diego County Water Authority. Okay, the board met on November 16th, 2023. Uh, mostly routine agenda items. There was a lot of action items. I'll highlight a couple of them. The board adopted a, the 2023 energy management policy. The board authorized the general manager to execute a wholesale market access tariff agreement with Clean Energy Alliance for providing energy to the Bud Lewis Carlsbad diesel plant. The annual electric bill there at the diesel plant is about $50 million, and they're looking to save about $5 million a year by uh, taking this action. Uh, Another routine item, the board adopted a re resolution establishing vote and representative entitlements of each member agency to be effective January 1st, 2024. That uh, covers both the weighted vote of each agency plus the number of uh, representatives they get to have on the board. And lastly, the board adopted the annual statement of investment policy as amended, and we were just talking about that, and continued to delegate authority to the treasurer to invest water authority funds for calendar year 2024. I'm going to note also that the out of closed session, the board directed the general counsel and general manager to finalize and execute a settlement agreement with Fallbrook and Rainbow in material conformity with documents reviewed during closed session. And this relates to the detachment issue and actions. That's my report, thank you. I have a question. Sure. Did we gain or lose ground with the new allocations and the weighted votes, or did We're, we stay the same? With the weighted vote, I think the percentage stayed about the same, about 3.1%, I believe. And the number of representatives is still one. Encino Wastewater Authority. 
Uh, yes, we had our uh, capital uh, committee meeting this morning at 7.30. Wonderful meeting we have. Um, uh, we did actually not have a status report uh, from the staff. Uh, and item number five was the uh, secondary and affluent electrical building and control project construction award. A pretty heated uh, discussion on this one, the $13 million project. Um, three of that, almost four of that, uh, was uh, uh, soft cost consultants, construction management, engineering services, and we all felt that that was extremely high, and we actually made recommendations. They chose to employ these individuals from former projects that they had the opportunity to employ them on this project. And we felt that that uh, process needed to be reviewed because it just appears that um, certainly they've been in favor the whole time, so they only had one bid on the whole project mm -hmm. because it just looks like Southern Electric, which has been on site for years and done a great job, magnificent, was the favorite. So although they had a number of people show up for the pre-bid meeting, uh, only one fellow showed up for the real bid. Uh, then we uh, approved the uh, odor reduction facility, foul air fan replacement, and that was the end of the meeting. Okay, thank you. Standing committees? I'll report on the P3 if there's... The P3 committee met on Monday, <clears throat> excuse me, and primary points of discussion were a potential partnership with the Rising Scholars Program at Palomar College, the Rising Scholars Program is a program for formerly incarcerated students, and we are opening a dialogue to consider piloting a project where we will bring in uh, a student in that program and have them be an intern, similar to what we've done for the um, water technology program. So we opened that dialogue. It was a productive meeting. Um, some more information needs to be gathered before we can make a decision about whether we will move forward. But I love the idea of continuing to move forward with partnership with Palomar College and um, move folks into the pipeline, so to speak, to, to work in water. Uh, a couple of other things that we talked about. We did talk about the scholarship, raising the scholarship fee. And there was not appetite at the current time to raise it to $2,000. But it is still up for discussion. We are still going to be discussing that possibility. So I wanted to report that to you because that's something that you had asked us to talk about in the P3 committee. When can we talk about it again? <laughs> <laughs> We've got a $34 million budget. We can't come up with $6,000. I don't know what the matter with that is. Well, if I'm not sure what the procedure should be, but if we would like to bring it to the full board, I'm happy to entertain that. I'd like mm -hmm. to agendaize it for the next meeting. OK, I will second that then. And uh, I believe that those are those are the two primary things we talked about. What anything else that you can recall? I don't have the agenda in front of me, <laughs> so okay. All right, thank you. Any other standing committee commentary? Okay. All right, directors' reports on meetings, conferences, seminars attended. Uh, attended the uh, Aqua conference um, in Palm Desert um, alongside Director Ellatharp and James and Jason. Uh, uh, enlightening conference uh, with a keynote opened by uh, Secretary y Yana Garcia. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, she, uh, you know, informed us on the environmental policies um, and uh, also um, uh, kind of hinted at potentially a, a future consideration uh, for um, uh, similar to what is being considered in energy right now for um, uh, use uh, um, based on income income-based use. Uh, and so for me, that's uh, to customers uh, a potentially alarming subject and something that I'm uh, trying to keep a uh, close uh, pulse on. And uh, I know specifically in energy, it's a really hot topic right now. Um, also was able to connect with uh, Neil Myers of uh, Lucadia. I've never had the pleasure of meeting him before, but uh, we're basically neighbors in the Costa there. Uh, really nice uh, gentleman, and um, you know it's cool to learn his uh, history here with uh, Valcitos as well. 
And uh, so we committed to uh, working together on uh, trying to bring the two orgs a little bit closer. Um, and as well as CARB and uh, the fleet, that was a really hot topic there. Uh, the kind of key and important part here is that um, grant, lots of grants are available and it's important to take advantage of them early uh, before they evaporate. And so something we should certainly uh, help steer uh, staff action towards is taking advantage of those grants, uh, which would in turn, of course, set us uh, ahead uh, from a, um, you know, budgetary standpoint uh, and certainly give our customers a leg up uh, for this upcoming requirement here. So something that I'm more than happy to help uh, advocate for uh, moving forward uh, the grant basis. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other conferences, please? Yeah, I, as Director Bruce had mentioned, I attended the Aqua Fall conference as well. Uh, Monday the 27th, I attended the Aqua JPIA board meeting as the alternate director from Viacitos. Uh, a very, very routine meeting. Uh, there were uh, updates on all, all four of the pool risk programs. Uh, the new CEO, I think it was her first, first or second board meeting, Adrienne Beatty, she came to our board, introduced herself with the, with the outgoing and retiring Andy Sells. But, uh, Every, everything's going well with the JPIA board. Uh, Tuesday, I attended the Energy Committee. Uh, as Director Grosset mentioned, there was a CARB Clean Fleet rule updates, and there was also a presentation uh, by the, county, the San Diego County Water Authority on the San Vicente Energy Storage Project. Uh, I also attended the Water Quality Committee and updates. Uh, big news is updates on several uh, MCL developments. So, uh, at the end of the conference, Wednesday and Thursday, I uh, attended policy forums on Bay Delta voluntary agreements approach to solving flow management issues and on the Colorado River issues. Uh, first, a history on how we got to where we are today with all the various water users and water rights and uh, where we go from here going into the future to solve future issues and evaluate solutions, so that was it. Okay, thank you. That is the end of the reports. Other business, director comments for future agenda items. We've already placed the scholarship program on the next agenda. And um, anything else? Any other comments, future agenda items? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's under the category of director's comments. I, I had a whole bunch of stuff I wrote down that I wanted to tell Glenn in a public meeting. Uh, unfortunately, he, I think he appropriated most of our time, but, <laughs> but I'm gonna go ahead and highlight some of it anyway. Most of it's already been covered. Uh, I appreciate everybody uh, acknowledging the accomplishments. Uh, I, st I started to make a list of accomplishments and started jotting them down for what Glenn and his team have uh, accomplished here, and I, I very soon ran into a very long list. But uh, I just w I wanted to first thank you for the for your expert leadership in, in a wide variety of areas. Uh, I've always said you were the right person at the right time to lead this organization, and how true that is. Uh, a couple of a couple of things I wanted to emphasize, and Jim Jim Gilpin uh, mentioned it was you led us through a horrible, terrible pandemic, and you maintained essential services to our customers. And I wrote customers, I didn't write ratepayers, <laughs> while keeping everyone as safe as possible. And that's, that, that was a monumental task and you did it expertly. I, I, I can't thank you enough for the job you did. Uh, the, other th the other one that wasn't mentioned too much that stuck out in my mind is you, you, revi you revived a strategic planning process that, we will, that will continue to benefit our customers going way into the future. And so, that was just an excellent pro process in my mind. And, and third, you provided expert succession planning, and including mentoring of our next GM. And that was already mentioned by others, but uh, anyway, I thought I'd mention that. Uh, you're always a staunch advocate for the customers as well as your own employees, and that's not always easy to do at the same time or simultaneously. But uh, it's obvious you loved your job, and I can't think of a better way to go out into retirement than go.
going into it from a job that you absolutely love, and that was obvious in everything you did. So, really appreciate that. I wish you all the best in retirement, and above all else, I value our friendship, and I hope to continue that friendship. And uh, you know, m maybe every time you're in town between road trips, we can sit down and have a beer. I, re I really enjoy that. So. So congratulations, my friend. Yeah. Thank you very much. Any other comments? Just an attitude. I, I didn't want to prolong it either. So I'll just, um, and that, that, it was all said. So I just want to, I appreciate your, your personal touch in a professional manner. This is one way to say it, the, the way you build relationships. I mean, I came in, and, uh, Director Boyd Hodges and I came in at a tough time during the pandemic, and you were able to kind of mentor us and help us along. And, Teach us, and I appreciate the one-on-ones, the knowledge that you have. It seems like you surround yourself with good people. It started with your wife, and you continued with your management team and everybody else. So I, you know, you're going to go surround yourself with trees and bears and lions and tigers and whatever else now. But uh, appreciate it. Just, a, just a, truly a thank you for the relationship that we built. Have a beer with Craig, and we'll go out and hit some golf after that, and then maybe I can beat you. <laughs> thank you. I truly appreciate it. Thank you. I'm uh, one of the few board members, uh, except maybe for Craig, that uh, has made the transition from previous general manager to you. And uh, it's been magnificent. Uh, just everything. I mean, it's incredible. I talked to our former uh, board member, Hal Martin, and I sp spoke to Mike as well. The smartest thing we ever did was hiring you. It just it, it uh, changed the direction, which was good before, has gotten excellent now. So, and I know with James stepping up, that's just going to continue to rise. So, thank you for your service. Again, call you when we have a poker game. <laughs> James, you got a lot to live up to here. <laughs> uh, and congratulations, James, and, and what a, a you know best possible torch to be passed here. So thank you so much for everything that you've done. And I know that we've only had a short time, but in this short time, I've loved every second of it. And you've certainly made being a director as uh, wonderful as it possibly can. Uh, thank you and very excited for what comes next for you uh, and all that relaxing that you get to do. I'll be living vicariously through you on that. Yes. President Hernandez, thank you for being the president this past year. Really done a great, phenomenal job and uh, have been uh, also being on the board an excellent experience. President Boyd Hodgson, thank you uh, and congratulations. Uh, really excited for the coming uh, uh, year here. And uh, Vice President, congratulations to you as well. Thank you. Yep. Thank you all. Okay. Well, this has been the loveliest meeting, <laughs> hasn't it? Um, okay. Any other comments? Future agenda items. Okay, I would like to give Glenn a round of applause for those of us that are still here. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You will be missed. And in case it wasn't clear because I was crying earlier, yes. you will be missed. And uh, very much appreciated. Very much appreciate your your leadership and all of these things that have been said. It's clear that there's a lot of affection for you in this room, a lot of appreciation. And, and, a, and a lot of um, inspired folks. So best wishes. And yes, yeah, send postcards, because it looks like you're going to be doing some fun things. We will. Thank you very much. Thank all okay. of you. OK. With that, we are adjourned. Oh.